Why, hello, and welcome back to another episode of Voice of the Rings. I'm your hosting guide, Zell and Iron Shield, and today we are going to be unboxing and reviewing the Sword of Arwen from the Lord of the Rings trilogy by Peter Jackson. Very excited! It's a beautiful one. Um, I have many of these United Color weapons. Again, if you want to go straight to the review, timestamps are below. Check out the timestamps. Um, is is a very awesome sword. You see it the most during the part where she's riding, right in the movie, uh, from the Ring Wraiths, and uh, she's pr trying to get Frodo to Rivendell, right? And then she stops the water and holds up her sword. That's the most iconic part of it, obviously, in the movie. It's one of my last ones to add to my collection because we're up in the 30s here with magnetic color replicas at this point. So I'm very excited to open it. Looks like a very beautiful sword. It's got the. It's all official. So let's get to the unboxing, my friends. Don't forget to like, subscribe. You did it. Find my channel. Wonderful. I do lots of Lord of the Rings content. You should check out all my playlists. They're all organized for you to get around real easily. So let's have some fun, my friends. Here we go. Let's do the unboxing. So I have a blade right here to unbox it with. I'm going to go ahead and just leave you guys on that right now. And we are going to occasionally I'll use Sting to open these. But again, I, I didn't want to go get Sting out of my room for it. So we're going to go ahead and whoop, cut this box open here. And again, you are welcome to use those timestamps if you'd like to just hop to the part where we review it. That is totally fine. All right, so we're gonna pull this out because again, I kind of want to keep this box because of the awesome um, work, artwork on it there. See, they got the like, here, I'll show you. All right. I like their little cover piece there of art right there. And there's the other one. Got some information on it and the other replicas, they sell that kind of stuff, right? All right, so let's get straight into opening it here. All right, uh, I'm so excited. By the way, big thanks to my Patreons and to all you guys for supporting the channel because the extra revenue that I'm making from monetization and you guys and the Patreons is why I'm able to at all even get any of these things to add and review for you guys on the channel. So big thanks to you and hopefully you guys enjoyed the reviews. So that is the goal and it's very exciting. Um, let's see, I think I've got some can this cut it good? You know what? We're in the Dwarven workshop. I'm sure I've got some cutters here that could cut much better. Let's see. Oh, you know what? There we go. Scissors. That'll work perfect. Boop. There we go. Yeah. All right. Here we are. Aha. There we go. Oh, look at this. And again, if you don't know who Arwen is from the movies, for some reason you found my video without knowing, then here's a picture with her and the sword, okay? Zolan, do that editing. Haha, <laughs> I do all my own editing, right? All right, here it is. Wow! That is so amazing. Let's get some close-ups for you guys. Whoa, the handle's real wood? It feels so good? Now, I will say if I was going to really wield this to fight, you're just like, ah, right? Um... It's a little, like the the handle, the, the hilt here is very um, short, right? So if you're thinking of a more realistic battle, um, the blade is very heavy and long. So I would want to do two hands, but I can, I can fit two hands, but like my hands are, I have pretty big hands. It's kind of like, I'm getting real close to getting onto the actual blade here. So, but I mean, still, it's supposed to be a one-handed blade, right? So, and realistically, if it was elven made, right? Again, it feels so realistic because it's so heavy. But if it was elven made, it'd probably be lighter, you know what I mean, or something. You know, there's a little, it's a very thin, beautiful blade there. Wow. You guys, it's fantastic. It's actually a very nice size blade, you know, just be like, doing the whole, like, stab. Not really a stabbing blade, but anyway, all right. Let's get some close-ups for you here, all right? To the close-ups! All right, you guys, here it is. Now, a quick little thing to note immediately, right off the bat, is the fact that it comes with its own stand for the, for the counter. So it is not a wall-mountable stand that it comes with. I was curious when I saw it, but it, it, again, gorgeous. As you can see, beautifully done. I love the uh, the elven along the blade. I'm actually curious off the top. It might say it here on the uh, thing what it says on it. It's actually just gorgeous. I love that little gold thing goes along the, the the branch or the leaf, or I guess they'd be vines, right? And then there they are right there. Oh man, look at this thing, you guys! High quality. Also found out. I love the wood handle in gold. We'll do some more close ups even closer. I also found out. Um, it came with a little bit of oil on it to keep it nice because, you know, it stays in the box sometimes for several years before you can, someone gets it. And um, 
Remember I told you these are usually not sharpened? Well, guess what? This one is rather sharp. I'm rubbing it, really thinking it's a replica, right, that's dulled, and found out, went straight to the paper I was using to clean it off, and got me right in the finger. And thank goodness it wasn't deep. So, not too deep, just a little whooshing right along the finger there. But, yeah, so still be careful, guys. They're they're real weapons. They, you could rep a, they maybe aren't the, quite the right kind of steel, cause, but these can still hurt someone, so you still need to be careful. Especially the points, you guys. The points are extremely dangerous. You have animals, pets, kids, be careful. Anyway, that make sure you think about that ahead of time. And also, don't hang them above your bed, especially if you live in a place with earthquakes or something. <laughs> All right, I don't have experience from that, I promise. All right. <laughs> All right, you guys, here you go. I'm gonna try to get some real nice close-ups for you. There we go, look at that. Again, I wiped it off. There's a little bit of dust on the blade, but that's just because my, my garage has dust in it in my workshop here. Look at the words. That is just amazing. Again, if you know the translation, put it in the comments, but we might figure it out here in a second when we read the thing. Again, I love that gold going along the blade, almost all, almost to the very tip of the blade, which is pretty cool. And then we go back this way to the other side. I absolutely love the wood and the inlay here on it. The gold, again, that's just painted on, but still, and look at that hilt. It's very nicely done. Even the, the crack connecting it looks high quality. Very nice. Let's, now let's, let's pick it up here. Good news is that was not a deep cut because there's no more blood coming out, so that's good. Um, it looks like it's been a little bit, maybe a little bumped, you know, maybe in the shop because it's been stored for a long time. Ah, but it looks pretty nice still. Again, beautiful, beautiful blade. Okay, here we go. Let's look at this side. This side has the number ingrained in there. You can see it. There it is, the U UC 1282. 2002, by the way, you guys, this is one of the last ones of the originals. I will review a lot of replicas in this channel that other people will not have because I've been collecting them for over 20 years since I was a very young Dwarven lad. Again, this side has pretty much the same thing. So there's a lot that were limited editions that people, you really can't get anymore unless you spend thousands of dollars from someone reselling it. It's not the realistic. Again, this priced one, I'll have it linked if these are still for sale. Um, I will have it linked in the description for you, so you can check it out. Um, of course, I will always have that for all my reviews, even if I forget to say it in some. <laughs> I'll always do that in the thumbnails for you, and I mean, not thumbnail, the comments. Anyway, gorgeous, gorgeous sword. I think we should look at the certificate to finish it up here, my friends. And here we go, here is the... So this is the sword's name is Hadafang. I believe that is how you say it. I hopefully I didn't butcher it, but that's okay. Again, certified certificate of authenticity right here. Sword of Arwen. All right, let's read it up here. Arwen's sword is called Harfang, which means, oh, here we go. Now we know. Throng cleaver. Interesting. Th throng cleaver. Hmm. I'm trying to think if that's a type of troll or not. I don't think so. It once belonged to the elven uh, princess, uh, yeah, Princess Idril. Oh, okay, very cool. Who met, wed a mortal man and bore Arendil. Oh, interesting. Interesting indeed. The father of Elrond. Okay, okay, all right, all right. Who in, sorry, I'll keep reading. Who in turn was father um, to Arwen. Before Arwen's birth, Elrond wielded Hadafang at the end of the Second Age of Middle-earth, during the last alliance of elves and men in the great battle against Sauron. Later, his daughter Arwen used Hadafang when she aided Frodo in his escape from the Ring Wraiths. Inscribed, again, of course, that is the lore change in the movies from the books, right? Because technically it was Glorfindel, but anyway, side note. But I really liked Arwen, and I thought she did a, it was a really cool part. Yeah, I liked it. Inscribed on the um, blade are runes in the elven language of Sindarin that say, oh, here we go. Let me see if I can do my elvish for you guys, ready? Ayan Estar, oh, lost my place, sorry. Ayan Estar, Hadafeng, I, Chatho, okay, 
Chatho Hen. Interesting. Thand Arod Dan I Thong An I Arwen. Hmm. This translates to. That was terrible. I'm so sorry, guys. The blade is called Hadifang, a noble defense against the enemy throng, throng for a noble lady. Oh, interesting. That is very cool. I'm going to say one more time. An Estar Hadifang, I Chathol Hen, Thond Arod Danai Thing on I Arwin. There we go. That's a much better one. I said that much better a second time. All right. The other uh, uh, really detailed sword is a reproduction of the sword featured in the Lord of the Rings film trilogy by Peter Jackson, presented by New Line Cinema, United Cutlery in, uh, Industry, leader in fine movie knife and sword re reproductions, has meticulously recreated the authentic sword using the finest grade materials and craftsmanship of the craftsmanship of the highest quality available. Close attention to detail is top priority in every piece. This beautiful sword with an overlay length of 38 and 1 8 um, inches, so that's how long it is. Whoop, right? All right. Uh, features a wood handle grip adorned with an elvish vine, which, okay, a vine, yep, design and solid metal um, pommel. The 30-inch blade is crafted of one-fourth thick-tempered 412 stainless steel and inscribed with runes in the elvish language of Sindarin. Each sword is um, presented with a wood display stand with a um, silk-screened elven design. The design of Hadifang, Sword of Arwen. The sword was designed and produced by Warren... Maya, uh, Maya? I might be messing up his name, her, their name. And the movie prop was created by the production swordsmith Peter Loyne, which we've known from other ones. The prop features a wood hand grip with a brass cap and steel blade inscribed with runes written in Sindarin script, translated by Daniel Falconer. All right. Very cool. And then there's the other side. Again, really, really cool. Well, you guys, that was awesome. I hope that you enjoyed it. Again, I gotta show you one thing, the bottom of the thing. Here's what the bottom looks like. It's got a little bit of information there. Eh, just a kind of a normal bottom. But again, beautiful wood. I really like the stand a lot. The sword is fantastic. I give this sword by itself. Again, if you're someone who wants to, you probably want to get the ones that are a little more iconic first, but definitely an A+. All right, my friends. Well, thank you so much for joining me today, reviewing Hadafeng, the Sword of Arwen, who which belonged to, obviously, Elrond, and before that, his mother. That's it. I've read, we read that. Hope I said that right. And again, you guys, have a wonderful day in Middle-earth. Thank you so much for joining me on this wonderful, I enjoyed, thoroughly enjoyed reviewing this sword. And again, we're going to have many more collection reviews in the future, so stay tuned. Don't forget to like and subscribe if you enjoy this stuff. And again, check out my playlist. I have the channels very well organized for you, so you can find all the stuff. And I do lots of different things, voiceovers, lore, collection reviews. I've been doing these for over a year and a half, well, since I made this video at least. There's ones farther back. And there's more to come because I have lots to do. So again, you guys have a great day in Middle Earth and happy to have you in the fellowship of Voice of the Rings. I'm your hosting guides on our channel as always. Stay happy. Thanks to my Patreons right there in the bottom. Subscribe button's here on top of me somewhere. And uh, in the next playlist, a video's up there for this playlist and a Lotro Tale of Meme content's right over there. Check them all out. And you guys have a wonderful day in Middle Earth, my friends. I'll see ya.